Hi everyone, Ken from Whittling Woods. Um, just going to do a little review of this knife. I was given this flex, it's called the uh, Flex Cut Carving Jack, right handed carving jack. Uh, I was given this as a gift maybe four, five years ago. Um, never really used it. I found it a bit cumbersome to use. Um, so it didn't, it, it has not uh, received a lot of use. I recently uh, found it at the um, bottom of my knife uh, collection and figured I'd pull it out, uh, sharpen it up a bit, and see if I could uh, get some use out of it. It's, um, it comes with six different tools, a straight carving knife, and we'll take them one out at a time here. They are a little stiff to get out at times, but as you use it, I think it does loosen up. When I first got it, it was incredibly stiff, and it still is. You can see as I'm pulling, in, pulling it out, some of the other tools are coming with it. You gotta be very careful, because it's so easy to cut yourself. I've, I've already done it um, accidentally, uh, nicked myself pulling them out. So th that's one thing about the knife that's careful. But uh, obviously, when you, when you have that many uh, blades and tools in there, it, it's, it pays to be uh, careful. It, uh, this is the main blade. Uh, again, this is the leather carving um, holder that it comes with, and it's got a belt hoop attached to it. It's very nice, very, very sturdy, thick leather, um, so it's good if you're on the go. You can strap it to your belt and go with it. Um, this is the main blade. Um, it's about, as you can see, an inch and a half. And uh, the, the knife overall, with the blade extended, is about six inches. The main handle is just about four inches, uh, an inch at its um, widest point. And then the width of it uh, looks like, um, uh, you know, probably five-eighths or so. So there you go. There's the uh, the main blade. Uh, we'll take one out at a time and uh, take a look at each one of them. And uh, maybe what I'll do is pull a piece of wood out and you can uh, see it in action. Now, uh, it, it, it comes relatively sharp. Uh, I, I don't believe it's anywhere near carving sharp. I spent a little time sharpening some of the blades up. I didn't do all of them, but I did spend some time uh, honing them, sharpening them, and um, I think that helps a little bit. Uh, so you're going to have to spend some time. Uh, you, you, it, in my opinion, it was not sharp right out of the box, Not not at least not to my uh, liking. And this is just a piece of basswood I'm using. And as you can see, once it's once it's honed up. It, it cuts fairly nice. Now the blade itself is fairly fairly wide here, maybe a little bit wider to some extent than I'd like. Um, it's got, it um, does have a, uh, you can see the bevel on here. I didn't ground down the bevel flat. I, I typically don't carve with, um, with a bevel like that on here. I like it flat uh, from edge to edge, so it's uh, not particularly um, suited for the, the way I, I typically would carve, but um, uh, that's pretty much how it comes, so I, I figured I'd show it that way. And there you go, it cuts pretty well. I mean, flex cut tools in general are, are well made. Uh, they're, they're pretty sturdy tools for the most part. Um, I, I think sometimes it's hit or miss depending on uh, what, what you get, how sharp they are. Some of them uh, come very sharp, others um, need a little work, but um, a little rough on the, on the edge here, but um, it's not bad. Now the knife itself will lock in. This is the, the one nice thing compared to a, I'll pull out a, a standard small little, um, very cheap pocket knife here. As you can see, these blades here um, do not lock. They'll, 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 they'll cut, they'll, you know, close up on you. You have to be careful when you're using it. You don't want to have your finger in the wrong place. You'll get cut. This one on the other hand, it locks. There's a locking mechanism back here. You, you press it and it releases the lock so the knife, uh, the, excuse me, the, um, the blades will, will be, uh, you'll be able to re retract the blades again. Uh, it's a little finicky. Sometimes it gets caught and it won't, um, won't lock properly. Uh, so you have to be conscientious of that. Uh, but there you go, it's back in. And um, in order to retract another blade, there's slight little, there's little grooves on the blades, and as you can see, it's still a little stiff. When I pull um, 
the um, the small um, chisel that I'm getting out here, it kind of pulled out the other blades with it. So uh, you you have to be careful that you don't cut yourself in the in that process. So you'll pull that blade out, make sure it's locked in, which it is. You can see it's not going anywhere. And this is bas basically a very small flat chisel. It looks to me as if it's uh, yeah, not even th not even uh, th three eighths. Yeah, probably um, yeah, five sixteenths. Maybe uh, it's 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 pretty small, but it's um it's a little flat chisel. You can you can use it as such. I, I don't know that there's much use in whittling for this. Um, some people may find it very helpful and useful. And it's, it wouldn't be my particular way of carving, but I guess if you develop a style, it may work for you. It's a, a little flat chisel, and it's, I, I did sharpen this one up, so it's, it's pretty nice. I, I could see, you know, maybe once getting used to it, it, it may come in handy. Um, but there you go. Okay, and again, to retract it, we, we press in this little locking mechanism. It allows the blade to be retracted in. Now we'll pull out, uh, which is essentially, they call it a... Uh, v scorp. It's like a small V gouge. Now the problem is you can see uh, sometimes the the little groove is difficult to reach and I find the other tool that I that I unfortunately have to keep nearby if I'm using this knife is a little pair of pliers. It, it's it's probably just this stiff. This maybe over time it would loosen up um, but uh, you'll 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 crack your nails sometimes trying to get them out there. They are so stiff. I did lube them up a bit to uh, loosen them. Uh, however, it's, they're, they're still stiff. Again, it locks in. And this is basically, as you can see, a small, a very small V gouge. Um, they call it a V scorp because of the way it's used. It's used in a pull cut. You, you pull like a scorp in here. And it could be useful for, for doing hair and stuff of that nature. Um, so it's, it's, it's probably nice. It's done in a, in a pull cut, which I find a little bit, um, uh, I'm not practiced enough at doing it in a, in a pull cut like that to feel comfortable with it. I would prefer the, you know, a standard, here's a flex cut standard, um, V gouge, which is done in the standard push cut. I think you have just it for me, I have more control, uh, essentially it does the same thing, but, um, I like being over top of the cut and seeing exactly what I'm doing. I find it easier to use that than I would uh, uh, a scorp of the gouge in, in the scorp configuration. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's convenient inside the carving jack to, to have that in, in some respects. And again, press in the, the uh, locking mechanism to uh, retract the blade. On the other side, um, these, um, they're, they're small little, small little, um, gouges. We'll pull out the first, well, excuse me, one of them's a small one, the other two are, are scorps. Uh, this is just a small, uh, maybe a seven, an eight. Um, and um, looks like a um, quarter inch. Uh, yeah, probably about a quarter inch or so. Um, pretty small. It's uh, uh, pretty useful. I, I prefer the the configuration, the the push configuration of this. Um, I would have liked the the V gouge on the other side to have the same the same configuration. But this is this is fairly useful. I could see this uh, being used in in whittling for maybe starting some of the details of of hair and and wrinkles. And again, it, it probably would depend a lot on the type of carving you're doing. If you're doing little figure carving, uh, like I prim primarily do. Um, this would come in handy in, in that capacity, and I could see maybe using it, um, using it for that. I find that tool actually f fairly useful uh, as far as the tools that are included with this carving jack. Uh, we'll pull out the two scorps. There's two on this side. Um, they are a bit difficult to retract separately. Again, unfortunately, I, I do have to use the the pliers to do this. 
Um, and, it, and it may be just a function of this particular uh, carving jack not having been used uh, long enough to, to loosen it up. Um, so if other people have this and they've had more success uh, uh, pulling out the uh, various blades, and uh, take that for what it's worth. But out of the box, mine was very stiff, and this is actually even less stiff than it was initially. Uh, I had greased them up and, um, and have been using it a little bit just to uh, just hopefully loosen them up, but they are still quite stiff. And this is, again, the Scorpio use it basically a pull cut um, not bad but again I'm not a big fan of using gouges in this type in this configuration um, so uh, if you get more practice at it it may be very helpful but uh, for me right now it's uh, not, not of particular use but um, uh, another style that uh, you could you could work at and probably get very good at. And the last one I believe would be predominantly used maybe for some type of um, spoon work. It's a it's a larger round gouge that um, that you can use uh, for if you're hollowing out the bowl of a spoon. I can see where that would maybe come in handy. Um, this is probably the least sharp. I, I did not spend a lot of time on this one because I would very rarely use it. I have dedicated um, spoon type gouges that I use that I find much much easier to use than this um, but as you can see this is not particularly sharp and it will require quite a bit more work in order to get it sufficiently sharp for for, uh, for any kind of carving but I guess uh, you could you could use it for maybe taking down the edge of a piece uh, to to dull that down, or excuse me, to uh, round it over a bit, um, but uh, that would be that would be that portion of it. Overall, um, I believe the cell for um, FlexCut has them advertised for quite a bit of money, like one hundred and seventy dollars, one hundred and eighty dollars, something of that. I, I, but I believe you, most places sell them for just around one hundred dollars, give or take. Um, would I recommend this for someone getting into whittling? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, no, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I still think you're better off with uh, a regular uh, carving knife. Uh, this happens to be a, a smaller one. Uh, if you watch this channel regularly, you, you know that I use uh, different types of uh, carving knives. Uh, I, honestly, if you were just starting out and you wanted something just to play around with, you can, you can get a Stanley um and you've seen me use this, a Stanley 199, and use that pretty effectively to to whittle with, um, you know, beginning. Someone who has some experience carving and um, wants something that they can carry along with them and have a, a, the convenience of six separate tools, a V-gouge, a couple scorps, a straight knife. Um, yeah, it would be probably pretty nice. And I, I'm sure after you use it for a while, it would become uh, very handy. I believe they sell in the kit, uh, Flex Cut. Maybe that's why the price is higher. They sell with a, uh, they have a, uh, a little leather honing, um, which I do not have with me. It's a, a little honing thing that has um, the profiles for, for the different pieces. So it would make it easier to keep those pieces home. Because uh, as you can imagine, the, the V-gouge, um, and the scorps are, are difficult to, to keep sharp unless you have a dedicated um, uh, piece of wood with some leather in that configuration of those various blades to, uh, to, to hone it regularly. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind that the, it's going to require some work and uh, a straight knife is very easy to keep sharp. Uh, just takes uh, time and, and patience, but you're, you're using it. Um, uh, it's a flat profile, so it's fairly, fairly beginner friendly. The more, the more unique the profile, the, the variations become quite a bit more difficult to keep honed and, and perfectly sharp. Um, but for the, the, for the price, I think you could, you know, you could buy yourself a dedicated carving knife and maybe, uh, a flex cut V gouge. And if you, and if you like the, um, uh, the round gouges, you could, you could find, uh, something, I think this is like a number 11, again, flex cut their palm gouges. You know, they would give you similar, uh, similar tools that the, that the carving jack has, maybe not as convenient to carry around. That would be 
uh, something to keep in mind if you plan to do this on the go. I could see where a knife like this may be handy. However, again, a very inexpensive pocket knife um, for probably a fraction, maybe uh, 10 to 15 percent the cost of this and it g gives you two uh, two carving blades at, l at least I mean you have a third typically but you're not going to use the larger one you can use this to open boxes and the other two to carve uh, the, these are convenient and they're fairly inexpensive I don't know that they hone up all that well because this is a uh, uh, these are you know uh, cheaper stainless steel um, although I think this one is probably uh, 440 but it's 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 they work they work pretty well if you if you spend some time and they're also very convenient and they're smaller to carry around um, the carving jack overall i think for the price it, it's a bit pricey it's kind of a luxury item uh again i got it as a gift i i, I, I did not buy it myself i was uh, given it as a christmas or a birthday gift uh, a number of years ago and um and it, it's it's an interesting tool and i believe with um a bit more practice and dedication you you could probably become I'm pretty proficient using this and get some nice carvings done. Um, I think I'm going to stick with my, my my standard carving tools. But for anyone interested in getting the flex cut, that's a quick little quick little review. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and um, um, I'll be happy to uh, answer them if I can. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye bye.